Well, it's time to talk about VR. What was often considered to be the future of gaming has kind of taken a back seat as of late due to just a sheer lack of interest in titles released on VR consoles and the general price of admission. Find out why companies like Sony are still hammering home the future of VR. Up next. <laughs> What up guys, this is Kalo. I'm here to give you the lowdown on all things gaming, and if you're new here, feel free to subscribe to this channel for weekly video game news content. So the PSVR 2 recently released, and the price tag has a few people turned off from it. The PSVR 2 is set to launch in February of 2023 at a price point of $550 US, which it's also worth noting that the PSVR 2 costs more than a base PS5, which you already need to play on the PSVR 2. Now it does come with the headset, headphones, and two PSVR Sense controllers, which are new and improved. Now, according to the vice president of brand hardware and peripherals, Isabella Tomatis, the PSVR 2 will, quote, allow you to escape into new worlds while feeling groundbreaking sense of immersion. Now, as for the improvements made on the headset, there will be a slimmer yet lighter design to the sense controllers, air vents to the headset itself, and a lens adjustment dial. And if you're willing to get into credit card debt, pre-orders are open on the 15th. Now, comparing the PSVR 2 to other competitors in the space, it is more expensive than the Oculus Quest 2, which released back in October of 2020, with a price tag of $300. But that price has since been raised to $400. But the PSVR 2 is cheaper than the MetaQuest Pro, which will run you around $1,500, or the Valve Index, which clocks in just under $1,000, but at that point, you're just spending money. And you might ask yourself, does that price tag reflect the console's performance? Now, when looking at the panel resolution for the PSVR 2, it does get a resolution of 2000 by 2040 per eye compared to the Oculus Quest, which nets around 1800 by 1920. Now, as for a field of view, the PSVR 2 has a full 110 degrees compared to the Quest 2, which only gets you around 96 degrees of field of view. Now let's get into the cool bells and whistles the PSVR 2 has to offer. Headset feedback, eye tracking, Tempest 3D audio, adaptive triggers, and haptic feedback all seem to be highlights of this new headset. Now, mind you, these were some features that were implemented in the PS5 controller, and based on consumer reaction, a lot of people enjoyed those features like adaptive triggers and haptic feedback. Now, looking at it from a larger perspective here, the PSVR 2 could, and I mean to stress the point could, be somewhat of an aggressively priced piece of hardware when compared to others within the market. But is it really a bargain for all that it's offering? Honestly, to me, VR right now, at least in the gaming space, is kind of a novelty thing. I really don't see any heavy hitters released on the platform that will get users in headsets. But when looking at prior iterations of the PSVR, it crossed over 5 million unit sales as of January 6, 2020. So people are buying it. And as of right now, it's the second best selling VR headset of all time behind the Oculus Quest 2. So what could be the saving grace for the PSVR 2? Well, it's releasing with Horizon Call of the Mountain, and you could get the game bundled in with the headset for around 600 bucks. So pairing it with one of their biggest IPs with this new venture into the VR space, Sony has clearly shown they are fully behind this. And the headset will launch with a library around 20 games, which is yet another good sign. But PSVR 2 isn't backwards compatible, which kind of sucks for those initial investors. And the reasoning behind this is because Sony is citing a vast difference in hardware. PSVR games are not compatible with the PSVR 2, because PSVR 2 is designed to truly deliver a next generation VR experience. This means developing games from PSVR 2 requires a whole different approach than the original PSVR. Now, looking at it from a consumer perspective, I really just can't vibe with that $550 price point. Yeah, you get a game's library of 20 titles, but there are no signs of backwards compatibility, which would give that library you've built even more value. So the bigger question here is, could Horizon Call of the Mountain generate enough hype around the PSVR 2? After all, Horizon Zero Dawn did pass 20 million sales as of February 2022, so there is interest in the property there. And honestly, I do think VR at some point will grow into something. As for what that something is... 
I really don't know. I think VR is still in its infant stages amongst consumers, with interest in the product increasing year over year. But I also believe those prices need to come down considerably to appeal to a larger user base. The Quest 2 at around 300 bucks seems to be the most popular headset of choice for users, and I think that's just based off of price alone. Add in more hard-hitting titles potentially like Horizon Call of the Mountain, and VR could be a viable gaming platform for years to come. So, as per usual, I'm going to pass a question off to you guys, the viewers. Do you really see VR being a viable source of gaming in the future? Also, do you think it's pretty popular now? And I want you guys to be honest here, if you do have a VR headset, how often do you truly use it? But that about does it here for all things gaming. I have been Kalo. Again, if you're new here, feel free to subscribe to this channel and drop a like on this video. But I'll see you guys next time.